Hey guys, it's me, Pokemon. I'm back, and today I want to talk to you guys about Dark Dimension 3. So that's something I'm finally preparing for. I've been playing this game for a long time, and you know, I think I'm finally getting to the position where I'm ready to start moving into this. So as you can see in the chat last night in my alliance, I had a pretty good night last night in Marvel Strike Force, not gonna lie. Just, I bought Thanos to seven red stars. I got Phoenix to gear tier 14 and I leveled up Ghost and Emma Frost. So as you can see, I, I did tell my lines that I was, I was kind of going crazy last night. So that's sort of showing you guys where I am moving in terms of Dark Dimension. But I suppose before I look at my roster, why don't we take a look at Dark Dimension 3 and give you guys an idea of how you need to prepare for it. So Dark Dimension 3 requires gear tier 14. That's the only requirement for characters to move into Dark Dimension 3. So let's see, let's, let's look at these. Uh, well, first, I guess we can look at the rewards. Nothing, the rewards are kind of nice, I guess, but this is mostly just materials. It's nothing exciting like getting uh, Ultron or Doctor Doom. Really, that's the only reason why I'm moving through Dark Dimension 3, so eventually, someday, I can move through Dark Dimension 4 and get Doctor Doom. You know, the, these are nice, but like, Come on now, we're here because we want to get Dr. Doom someday. How many of these do we get? We get, it doesn't say. So, but this will be nice. This will help me bring up more characters to gear tier 14. So my second run of Dark Dimension 3 will be even easier. And hopefully this will allow me to clear more content in the game easier. Not to say I'm struggling that much at the moment, but would not mind. And let's see, what do we get for the timed run? We will get a five star, five red star Ultimus and we'll get some gold promotion credits. So that's nice too. And then some more gear. So let's take a look at this. So I believe we this is essentially broken up into four categories. We have these first couple of nodes right here with no restrictions. You can use whoever you want on here. That's pretty good. That these should be relatively easy to clear. Once you move further on, uh, right here, node five, you start needing to use global characters. This shouldn't be too bad. Phoenix is global. You can use characters like Phoenix. I believe Emma Frost is global too. I think um, Ghost is global too. So there's some pretty competent global characters. We move further on. Cosmic. Mm, Minerva. Um, Cosmic's definitely going to be probably one of the harder sections for me. City. Not going to be too hard. The only problem is getting the gear for these characters. Symbiotes could dominate this node, but the problem is all the symbiotes share gear. So it's it's a, it's a huge pain to level up the symbiotes. But if I was able to get symbiote Spider-Man, Anti-Venom, and Carnage or something like that up to gear tier 5, 14, uh, those city nodes would be pretty easy to complete. So essentially that's how it works. It's broken up into four sections. Anyone, Global, Cosmic, and City. So let's take a look at my roster and I want to show you guys who I'm building up in preparation for that. So I suppose probably the best way to show you guys this would be to show everyone by gear tier. So you can see who I have at the highest gear tiers right now. So for Cosmic and then let's filter. Let's go through the, the characters one by one. So let's start out with Global. I'll show you guys who I'm planning to bring in there. Now you don't necessarily need a full team of characters. You'll need five gear tier 14 characters, I believe, to start any Dark Dimension 3. It was the same for Dark Dimension 2. You needed five gear tier 13 characters to start it. But once you get those five to start those first few nodes, you can use two or three characters for those other nodes. And I think you know, that's how most people do it. You should be able to get by with only using those characters. So who am I planning to use? Probably <laughs> right here, Ghost, Emma Frost, Phoenix. Maybe Colossus if I'm sort of feeling like it. I don't know, we'll see. Shuri, uh, Shuri's pl plausible, but she's not that high for me right now. And while she provides some interesting stuff for the team, I don't think it's quite enough to really justify bringing her in. I don't think that defense up is really gonna be enough to help out the team that much. And honestly, with Phoenix, Emma Frost, and Ghost, I think that is gonna be enough to dominate. Ghost, all I need right here is I just need some more of these little uh, superior quantum energy things and I can get her up to gear tier 14. Emma Frost, I have enough to get her up to gear tier 13 right now, but then once I get her up to gear tier 13, I'm gonna need a lot more of these ballistic weaves, I believe, to get her up to gear tier 14. So Emma Frost might be a bit, but even if I don't get Emma Frost online, Ghost and Phoenix should be pretty hefty right here. Again, you wanna see percentage-based damage in Dark Dimension with uh, Phoenix's ultimate right here in her Dark Phoenix mode, if we can switch over to Dark Phoenix. 
So as you can see right here, she steals 15% health from enemies, and then her ultimate does a ton of damage too. So these are pretty good skills right here from Phoenix. Um, she's just really strong stuff. She even does damage when she spawns in. Her basic deck also really strong. Phoenix just hits hard, and so she'll be a really good character for Dark Dimension. If we take a look at Ghost, she just has a pretty good kit overall. She can remove turn meter with her basic attack. That's really good. Special, apply negative effects. You know, that's fine. Her ultimate really good too because as you can see steal 10 percent health from all enemies i might try to tier for this too at some point so that way i can get 15 percent health so between phoenix and ghost no matter what happens in a given day 30 percent health goes away now that kind of gets a little finicky once you start going against healers because they can heal that back up so you got to be careful of that but they can steal health and she will heal herself by doing this too so pretty good stuff right here and then her passive uh you know it's not bad it's sort of it, it, this would work better if she's running a full pimp tech team but i don't know who's going to build up a full pimp tech team for dark dimension so really ghost it's the, that ultimate and her basic attack are really good stuff emma frost is really appealing because of her ultimate right here she can sort of uh, take control of some enemies and they will attack each other which is really good because dark dimension characters are like boosted through the roof so if you can get them to hit each other that's a decent amount of damage coming out right there plus she's just she's a pretty solid kit all around she removes speed from enemy team minus 10 percent speed that's a really good passive pretty good in pvp too if you guys are trying to clear pvp so let's take a look at cosmic <laughs> this is going to get a little more difficult but let's see who i have for cosmic so there are a couple of appealing options right here first off minerva i have enough to get her up to gear tier 14 right now so i will be leveling her up uh to 75 so i can get her to gear tier 14 again right here you see this ultimate steal 15 percent health really good stuff right there because no matter what 15 percent health stolen thanos my thanos is huge i would really like to bring thanos in he gives energy when people die he would be kind of nice to bring in the only problem is I need to see what Doomore Chapter 3 makes for him because I need so many of these superior Shogoth Ikor because he doesn't not only does he need 15 here he also needs 15 over here so he needs a ton of these he needs so much of that which makes him a real pain to bring in Hella, another really good character for Dark Dimension 3 she also needs a ton of this superior uh, Shogoth Ikor so I really need that to become farmable then I'd probably bring Hella in too she doesn't really deal any percent damage, which was nice as she summons this undead Asgardian. And if he gets hit, that's essentially, characters in uh, Dark Dimension 3 hit hard. So if you can get them to hit Greg, the undead Asgardian, you, you essentially gain a turn because instead of you dying that turn, the undead Asgardian dies and he'll just respawn. So essentially gives you an extra life if somebody hits him. Pretty good there. Black Bolt, I could bring in. The problem is Black Bolt doesn't bring a lot of utility. Really, he just brings some, uh, he just brings damage. I mean, if I happen to get the materials to bring Blank Bolt up to gear tier 14 sometime along the way, he wouldn't be a bad character to bring up anyways, because, you know, he's useful throughout the whole game. But, eh, I don't know. I, I, he just doesn't bring a lot of utility. I think between Minerva, Thanos, Hela, if I could get that trio going, I think we'd be really on to something right there. In terms of other characters, I mean, Ebony Maw, I'm probably going to unlock him soon from the event. So if I could get Ebony Maw up to him, uh, up to uh, gear tier 14 somehow, he would be really good because as you can see, he steals health from enemies. So again, it's percentage base. Another really good character for Dark Dimension 3, um, but I don't have him unlocked, so he has a long way to go. But I'll be loving him anyways because he's really good. And once I have Ebony Maw, I'll be running Black Order and Arena. So I don't know. I, I could get Ebony Maw up to gear tier 14. At the very least, he might be participating in my second run of Dark Dimension 3. Oops, backed all the way out. Let's take a look at City. City is probably the most straightforward, but it's the most difficult because right here, as you can see, the City roster, who's really good right here, are the Symbiotes. But they all share the same stuff. So that everyone needs this. Uh, oops, let's go Let's go to one of Symbiotes. Spider-Man's gear that actually needs it. He needs it right here. So they need this uh, Alien Spores. If we go right over to Carnage, Carnage also needs the alien spores, so all of them need alien spores. Makes it really difficult to level them up. That's not even accounting for the fact that they just share gold bio gear, which is, you know, difficult to farm. The superior molecular scan, a lot of them share that too. That's not farmable at the moment. So, you know, throughout the whole symbio team, you have this struggle of like, man, why why are you all sharing the exact same material? I guess it makes sense because they're all symbio, but still kind of a pain. Non-symbiote characters that you could bring in. Some people bring in Mercenary Lieutenant because he has this buff right here. 
I don't know, honestly, by the time I could get Mercenary Lieutenant up to that level, I would hopefully have a couple of the symbiotes of Gear Tier 14, and, you know, they're, they're kind of, they can just do their own thing. They don't really need Mercenary Lieutenant. I saw some people brought Ghost Rider in. I think this is more just because there's nobody better to bring in, so I don't think that, I don't think there's any reason to bring in Ghost Rider. And then for those non-specific notes, I'll just bring a mix of the characters, pretty much whoever I have unlocked at the time, because there's no real synergy going on here. It's just these are some of the best characters in the game. We can actually take a look through the nodes and see who people have used to fight them in the past. You can see right here, people have brought in characters like Thanos, Black Bolt, Ebony Maw, Hela, Minerva. Some people bring in Ultron. I, I don't know. I've heard mixed things about Ultron. Ultron doesn't possess a ton of utility. He's a good character. Probably similar to Black Bolt. He's a competent character, does decent damage, but I don't think Ultron brings a lot of utility to the team. So I don't think I'll be building up Ultron. As you can see though, similar characters, Phoenix, Mr. Sinister, he's another good character to bring into the battle right there because he can clone, turn it into at least you can have six characters on the team. And if they have a character like Phoenix or Minerva on the enemy team, you can clone them and that's an additional 15% damage coming out of return. So Mr. Sinister, another good character. Problem is with mutants, I already have Phoenix coming up, uh, Emma Frost, I'd really, I wouldn't mind Colossus coming up maybe. Colossus would be kind of nice for Phoenix. So Mr. Sinister, it's gonna be hard to bring him up too with the other mutants, but Mr. Sinister, another very competent character. You can see down here, they are running a Symbiotes team. Let's skip over to one of these nodes. Uh, as we can see, global characters, who are they using right here? So. So Nick Fury, Magneto, I don't know about Nick Fury and Magneto myself, um, it looks like, I imagine a lot of these people are kind of whales, so they, they probably have all these characters built up, like, you know, Psylocke I wouldn't build up, he, he probably just already had Psylocke built up for some reason. But you can see this guy right here, he's only running three characters and he's able to clear it with just the three characters, Phoenix, Ultron, Mr. Sinister. That's probably what I'll be doing. That's what a lot of people do their first time through. They do not use a full team. They just sort of run with who they have. This guy only used four characters. Scientist Supreme, another good character. Problem with Scientist Supreme is if you're not on aim, she applies debuff, she'll flip them eventually, but I don't find it that reliable. She does provide a revive chance to the team, which actually I have found Scientist Supreme's revive somewhat reliable, but I don't think I'm gonna bring up Scientist Supreme. Let's skip over to one of the cosmic nodes. Let's see what people are using here. As you can see, Ebony Maw, Minerva, very common characters to see percent based damage. Hela, people like Hela. Thor and stuff like that. I don't know about those characters. Let's see if anyone didn't use a five member team. So, as you can see right here, this guy just used Minerva, Hela, Thor, and Proxima Midnight. Proxima Midnight, I don't think I'm going to bring in. That's an interesting choice right there. Proxima Midnight. Proxima Midnight does bring a stun. This right here, we can see this guy just went for straight Black Order. Straight Black Order here. <laughs> I will not be getting my Black Order up to gear tier 14 right here. You have to keep in mind, some of these people are probably coming through at a second time. So, these are are less conservative teams you know these are more just like you know i have a bunch of gear tier 14 characters i can use whoever i want first time through you're probably not going to be running through the five member teams in every single node let's take a look at this city we're probably just going to see symbiotes so we can see somebody brought kamala khan there's that ghost rider i was talking about and this is probably similar to what i'll be doing right here we just have two symbiotes and somebody else this guy just used the three symbiotes this guy just used one symbiote and an assortment of the defenders three symbiotes two symbiotes so I'm probably just gonna run a couple symbiotes and then call it a day for that node. In terms of the future for farming out these materials, I, I'm pretty sure Doom War Chapter 3 will make every single gear tier piece you'd need to get to tier 14 farmable. They said mini uniques would be farmable in chapter three of the Doom War campaign. Now, mini uniques, I'm not the best with the terminology, but uniques are unique to the characters and many are the little pieces you need. So I assume that's stuff like the alien spores. Correct me if I'm wrong down below. And if that is true, then I'm really excited for Dark Dimension 3 because the big pain is up until this point, you just had to get the drops randomly for characters out of the store or out of an orb. You have to get their mini uniques just like, oh, I guess I can bring up this character now because I accidentally got their stuff. Or you'd have to buy them one at a time in the store, which is also not that fun. But if they make all the mini uniques farmable for gear tier 14, that is huge for this game. Uh, essentially, that's them saying, okay, we want everyone to be able to clear Dark Dimension 3 now because it's all farmable. You know, as they add more stuff, they increase the goalposts for what everyone should be able to reach. At one point in time, Dark Dimension 2 was pretty unachievable. Nowadays, I consider it relatively achievable. I think we're reaching the point in the game where Dark Dimension 3 is going to cross that threshold as well. We'll have to see with Doom War Chapter 3 how much becomes farmable. Hopefully everything. That'll be a good day for me if everything does become fun, but of course I'll have to clear these missions first. But we'll get there when we get. So I hope you guys taking a look at my roster and seeing my thoughts has helped you guys compose your thoughts for your Dark Dimension 3 run. And with that being said, at the end of the day, what do I really know? Because I am only 19 year old. I hope you're looking to have a happy and healthy day, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Sign off at point.